So today I'm going to show you how to do summary reports uh, or aggregate reports. For now, this is what we have in our reports. We have this account report and this is what we did in the previous class. We were able to uh, display this report based on the data in our database and we make some changes. It's going to update here automatically. So this is the first kind of report you can do. Now this applies to this as well. So the same way you do this is the same way you do this very well. Okay, so let's now talk about aggregate or summary report. The, uh, the procedure is also here in my website, getting data summary. What does this mean? Well, before I continue, I'd like to recommend, please subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed. And now if you have some challenges, please do let me know in the comment box below. Um, in that way, you get notified when I make some new lessons. And I also provide you support you need. Now, if, we, if I go to this place, mo most of the time you want to see a summary. For instance, you have this employee list. You want to see how many employees are from different countries. Now. Generally, this number of employees per country is not entered in your database. So you have to kind of write a query to actually automatically count the employees by country. That's what I'm going to be showing you how to do. In this case, we are going to be using city here. So I'm going to uh, display count of employee by city. For instance, we have uh, the Budapest, Budapest, we have two Budapest here. And yeah, so it's going to count the employees by city. So even if you have uh, thousands of data here, it's going to count each of the em each of the uh, employees for the number of employees in the city. So let's follow the steps right here. So this is the explanation of what I just uh, said now. So so this is the principle. You need to actually extend the employee repository. And now when you go to the employee repository you have to write a native query because normally to get aggregate or summary, you need to write SQL query. That is the, actually um, the easiest way to do it. Um, so, uh, so let's go to the employee uh, repository. So I'm going to go here to HR and go to the employee repository. So I'm going to extend this repository to actually return the list of count of employees by uh, by country. So generally, this repository returns list of employee, but since we are getting a list of employee by country, that will be list of objects. So it's going to give us, uh, for instance, actually list of employee by city. So it's going to give us Oga City to Budapest to Asaba to or one Lagos and so on. So it means we don't have this object made up of two fields. So we're going to just call it object, right? So instead of having uh, calling it list of employees, we call it a uh, list of objects because for now we don't know the makeup. Exactly the makeup of the object is not employee, but uh, some other kind of object that we don't have as a model. Okay, so, um, so having done this, we are now going to uh, fetch this data, this get count by country in the REST report controller and send it across uh, to the page. So I'm going to the report controller now. So I'm going to uh, call this repository to give me this data and so I can send it across to the page. So report controller is going to be this. So uh, as the same way I'm sending the transaction, I'm also going to be sending the uh, get count by country. So it means I'm going to auto-wire the employee repository here as well. So I'm going to say auto-wire private employee repository, employee repository. And so here I'm going to just add model.add attribute. And I'm going to call it, uh, I think I call it employee count, something like that. And it's going to be employee repository that gets uh, get count by country, as you can see right here. Okay, so this is now signed across to the account page. Uh, now you can design your report, uh, the UI, you can plan it the way you want, but this is the underlying principle the, of how it works. So if I now go to the accounts page, if I go back to the account page, I'm going to now fetch uh, this employee count so that I can use it to plot a graph uh, in the JS file. So 
I think I'm going to just close uh, every other thing. Um, so I'm going to um, um, the uh, re uh, resources. I'm going to my template and reports. So a report here. I'm going to this page. This is the page we are working on. So in this page, we are now going to fetch the list of employee the same way we have list of transactions. Not list of em employee, actually the employee count. So I'm going to call it employee count, employee count. And this is going to be employee count. Now let's use this employee count to plot uh, the bar chart. So if I go to the custom reports now, we have donut. I don't want to use donut. We have line. I think we can use either pie charts. Uh, no, not pie chart, but we can use this bar chart. Okay. So now first let's uh, yeah. So. Uh, let's first console log this employee and see what is there. So I'm going to say console.log. I'm going to say employee count. So let's see what is there first so that we now know what the X and Y uh, values will be. So I'm going to run and let's take a look at this employee count. Uh, okay. So if I go back to the reports here, I'm going to report home, I'm going to log in, and I'm going to account report. Now let me display my console so that we can see the, uh, the structure of this. So this is an array. Okay, so this is an array you can see. Uh, it's made up of uh, different items. Okay. Okay, so um so yeah so let's go fetch the first item and the and the, and the second item so let's see this zero one okay okay so it's giving us a count of employees by city okay so we now want to fetch uh this employee right here so let's take a look Okay, so here we use the same principle we use. So we are going to map uh, through the employee count and retrieve the X values. I think the X values should be, um, the X should be, uh, so the zero item, let me see. So I have, this is, um, let me just refresh this one more time. Okay. Um, so I think I should just check uh, the repository one more time so we know the X and Y. So, okay, so let's say the X is uh, zero and the Y is one, okay? Let's see, X is zero, Y is one. So I'm going to come here and now I'm going to, we are going to now use the bar, uh, the, the, the bar charts. So I'm going to use a bar chart here so you can see the bar chart data is what I'm going to modify right now. So instead of using this uh, generator too much, I'm going to just use this. By the way, if you look at the bar chart, you have this January to March. Now I want to display the employee data instead of this uh, January to March. And this case will be count Y, right? Okay. Okay. So at this point, we will have a summary of employee counts uh, displayed in a bar chart. So let's see. So I'm restarting the application right now. So if I go back here to refresh and I'm going to log in. So you can now see the employee displayed uh, in a bar chart. Uh, as you can see, there are some very long ones <laughs> that are existing ones. So if I go back here, let just change this one to one, to change to two to change this one to four to change to three to change to one five two so it will make sense at this point so i'm going to stop and rerun so at this point it will make some sense so if i go back here and refresh uh, let me just take all this and re-login back you can see now that it makes some sense okay um, so you can see 5.0, we have um, 4, we have 2, we have 1, 
uh, yeah. So this is basically how it works. Now, if I go to, you see, a copper here, you see, a copper kind of, I don't know, it has, let's go check. So if I go back to HR home and go to employees, and you see, um, a copper has uh, one employee, so, uh, so it means that it is one. Okay, I don't think I'll continue dwelling on this. For now, let me give you some time to, to try to understand what is going on here. So this is one and two, okay? So, um, so but the fact that some are really so high, some are very low, that's why you have it this way. So I hope you understand uh, this, how to get the summary. Um, if time permits, we can do a little bit more on charts and graphs, but for now, I hope you get the point. This is not a complete advanced tutorial on charts. When we do Fleet ML version 3, we are going to be using some other libraries to be able to integrate graphs and charts in Angular uh, framework. I don't really want to waste my time here doing all these uh, graphs here, but I hope by now you should have be able to arrange uh, a dashboard. So this is a dashboard. You can actually arrange it the way you want using bootstrap cards and you can also get some of this from homepage and put it right there. You have every, every the details you want in your, in your dashboard. So you need to design actually your dashboard the way you want it. I'm going to be stopping here. Please remember to subscribe, like, and also leave me a comment if you have any challenges. So if you benefited from this class, please uh, do leave me a comment. So let's see in the next part. I remain kind on the Tech Pro and I'm always there for you.